Well, the Faith Foundation seems to be something they created, Mossack Fonseca created, to serve as a shareholder on these foundations. And one of the things that uh, Mossack also did was encourage people to take names that sound like something else. Uh, so, uh, the Red Cross, uh, World Wildlife Fund, they would use names like that in these foundations to give the camouflage of being a charitable foundation when in fact they're not. The advantage to these foundations is they require three directors, only two of them have to be named. So they would appoint two directors from the law firm and then the third person would be the actual beneficial owner. And then they have layers and layers of ways to camouflage that. So if there's not a registry that tells you who the real owners of all these companies are, you'd need some tip to go fishing and so that it mostly just remains secret. Right, and in many cases, even when you have that person's name and go to a country, they'll do the minimum. I think uh, in Panama, for instance, their selling point has been privacy. And it's not just the shell companies, the banks themselves. It takes a pretty high hurdle to get them to cough up information. In some cases, there's clearly tax evasion happening here. In other cases, you see money which points to corruption or fraud, although you'd still have to investigate it. And then I guess there's simply the removal of large amounts of money from the economy of the native country. Yes, and, and one of the things that's, that, that's interesting in, in here is that this is a Latin American country. It's a crossroads. Panama's kind of a crossroads between North and South America. And obviously the uh, Panama Canal is a global hub for trade. So what you have is countries in which either you have confiscatory tax policies or you have violence or you have you know, the threat of collapse. I, I had the good fortune of working in Latin America in 2001 when Argentina collapsed and one of the things that was so fascinating as an outsider, for 10 years people were allowed to keep accounts in dollars and then one day to the next the government said we've seized your dollars, they're now roughly four pesos to the dollar and so basically a 75% cut in what you've had in the bank account and hey, by th Thursday we're going to throw open the exchange rate and let the, the free market determine it. Well, can you imagine being an Argentine in that situation? And I think uh, those kind of things help fuel this too, the instability and, and, and lack of any good governance in many of these countries is certainly a contributing factor. We are speaking with Kevin Hall. He's the chief economics correspondent for McClatchy Newspapers. We'll continue our conversation in just a moment. This is Fresh Air. It's Fresh Air on WNYC. I'm Ilya Meritz, and with me today is Paula Schumann. She helps develop podcasts for WNYC, like Note to Self, The Sporkful, and Two Dope Queens. And we're taking just a few minutes out of the regular program to try to raise the money today that keeps WNYC coming to you through your radio speakers every day. This is listener-supported radio, so please make a contribution right now, and it will come back to you in the form of great news and information that you hear every day. Number to call is 888-376-9692, or you can go to WNYC.org. And this hour, we have a little something special, a little added inducement to get you to jump into the pool. What is it, Paula? A little something special from Fresh Direct. It's a $2,000 Fresh Direct gift certificate that we'll give away right now. Uh, you'll be entered to win if you donate today. Uh, Fresh Direct, if you don't know, deliveries, delivers groceries straight to your door, straight to my door, actually, has become as iconic as, as many other New York um, institutions. So all you have to do is pledge pledge anything pledge today pledge right now you're automatically entered to win a two thousand dollar fresh direct gift certificate that is a lot of groceries that's a ton of cheese yeah oh. <laughs> so call us a ton of cheese 888-376-9692 uh, or you can go to wnyc.org and um, it just takes a few minutes to show your support now is the chance to support all that we do um, being entered to win the gift certificate is 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 just a bonus right and uh, you don't have to contribute of course to be entered to win, but we sure hope that you do. And while you're on the WNYC website, maybe you want to click over some of the thank you gifts in, that you get in addition to the chance to win that gift certificate. So that's just a little added inducement, but we're urging you now to get involved. Do it while you're thinking of it. Don't delay. Number to call is 888-376-9692. Help support great radio. Hi, 
This is Rosie Perez, lifelong New Yorker and member of WNYC. I have a question for you. What do you love about living here? Because it can be hard, right? It's expensive, it's crowded, it's noisy. So you must really love something about it to compensate for all that stuff. I'll tell you what I love. I love the people, the food, the culture, the arts, and I love WNYC. The in-depth news, the intelligent shows, the entertaining podcasts, Brian, Terry, Brooke, and Ira. Don't you love Ira? WNYC has kind of become my secret New York best friend. So I have one more question. Does WNYC make life better for you? If it does, if you rely on it like I do, then think about what it's worth to you and make that contribution right now. <laughs> Here's how. It's so easy to do. The number to call is 888-376-9692 or click on over to our secure website at WNYC. You can make there. Thank your secret New York best friend. At least we hope that WNYC is your secret New York best friend. I like the way Rosie put I it there. That, yeah. Um, WNYC, I mean, there's no place like it. Yeah, I and mean, what you talk about, what do you love about living in New York? The food, the culture, Brian, Leonard, Terry Gross on right now with fresh air. That's the kind of that's the kind of news and in-depth reporting right now. Uh, they've got Kevin Hall on talking about the Panama Papers for a full hour, really getting deep into this investigation in a way that other news organizations can't because so many commercial news organizations are scaling back at a time when we are expanding. And the only reason we're expanding is because of people like you and listener support. And please help us keep doing this by calling 888 376 9692 or going to wnyc.org it just takes a minute to pledge anything you can of course it's not really about the thank you gifts but i, I do want to highlight one thank you <laughs> gift that that is new uh this drive and that is the wnyc market tote uh this is the sound of it it's kind of crunching oh, a little bit it sounds good yeah it sounds sustainable <laughs> it's uh it sounds kind of waterproof it is a it is a colorful tote bag pretty deep you could hold a lot of groceries yep. in there uh, there's a plastic bag tax coming in, I believe, a little later this year, so yeah, you might want to get this now. Be prepared. Uh, that is yours for a pledge of $7 a month, $84 for the year. Uh, it's a reusable bit bag, perfect for kale, baguettes, fish, whatever. Take it to the grocery store and let them know that you support WNYC. 888-376-9692, that's the number to call. And I love that you could put your kale in there and it won't get the bag wet. But a WNYC tote bag is another thing. I often see kale being carried in your classic WNYC tote bag. People walking around Brooklyn. Um, yeah, it can be yours for any pledge right now. The market tote in particular is only $7 a month. That's $84. Um, and you're automatically entered to win that Fresh Strike gift certificate. Call now, 888-376-9692. Nine, nine, six, six, nine, two. Two. And thank you so much. If you've already pledged, we really appreciate the support. Listeners make great radio possible. WNYC is supported by GEICO, offering car insurance as well as services for homeowners and renters insurance through the GEICO Insurance Agency. Additional information can be found at geico.com or 1-800-947-AUTO. I Love New York, Rockland County Tourism and Garner Arts Center, presenting its arts festival this Saturday and Sunday, 35 miles from NYC, art installations and open studios in industrial spaces. More at GarnerArtsCenter.org. WNYC is a media partner of the Public Theater, presenting Free Shakespeare in Central Park, beginning with an all-female production of The Taming of the Shrew, May 24th through June 26th. Tickets at PublicTheater.org. <laughs> Our Family Foundation supports WHYY's Fresh Air and its commitment to sharing ideas and encouraging meaningful conversation. Support for NPR comes from NPR member stations and from the financial services firm of Raymond James, offering personalized wealth management advice and banking and capital markets expertise, all with a commitment to putting clients' financial well-being first. Learn more at RaymondJames.com. And from Progressive Insurance, with insurance for cars, home, boat, motorcycles, RVs, and commercial vehicles, at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and progressive.com. This is Fresh Air, and if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Kevin Hall. He is the chief economics correspondent for McClatchy Newspapers. He's one of 
Many journalists who've done reporting on the Panama Papers, that's documents leaked from a Panama-based law firm that has registered thousands of shell companies permitting wealthy and powerful people to hide their assets. Let's look at one of the cases that emerges from the research in these papers. There's this guy, Naman Wakil, Syrian-born guy um, with a Venezuelan passport. Tell us about him. Uh, Mr. Wakil is an interesting case because he has ties to North Carolina and Florida. He's traveling on a Venezuelan passport, uh, was born in Syria, seems to have contacts uh, all over the world. About the time that we were reporting uh, on him, one of the things that uh, happened in Venezuela was a report that came out April 19th that alleged that he had paid the two brothers-in-law of a very important general in Venezuela to uh, get a food contract and from that was able to pocket about 76 million dollars. Uh, when we overlap the time frame of that with the documents, we find that Mr. Wakil is opening an account, is opening a shell company with, uh, with Mossack Fonseca in 2013. But um, we don't know whether that money was the same money he's using, but his lawyer says he's got 400 million dollars. He's trying to move about 14 million into trusts that will steer clear of U.S. taxes but stay consistent with U.S. tax law. Uh, he's brought to Mossack Fonseca by a Citigroup banker, uh, Victor Olivo, who is using a personal email rather than his Citigroup email, but within the Mossack Fonseca documents shows up as a person who is a reference. So uh, Mr. Wakil uh, establishes an uh, offshore and uh, he's, he's a mystery. He's able to move large sums of money. The Venezuelan government has declined to investigate. What the investigative report in Venezuela alleged is that he creates what are called mirror companies that take the name of legitimate companies that sell chicken and beef in large quantities, big household names in Brazil, create a mirror company in, say, St. Lucia and then bill the government from there and he pockets the difference he bought meat that was about to expire this is the allegation and paid one price but then actually billed the government at the full price and pocketed the difference and part of that was then spread around to the family of the general who runs the food program for the poor in venezuela so that was a particularly distasteful allegation. So, so that's a case where a guy appears to have gotten tens of millions of dollars in a corrupt arrangement in a country. And why does he need this law firm? What does it do for him? Well, in this case, the law firm was looking to uh, the lawyer involved who was helping to create trusts. Uh, he wanted to basically have these assets in a, in, a, in a way that would be hard to get to if he was sued. This may be completely unrelated or it may be related. We don't know. It's up to law enforcement to find the answer to that. And there's no evidence that law enforcement of Venezuela is going to do anything about it since the reaction was to criticize 